Sports. On a typical day in the brain, trillions of messages are sent and received, and more than 100,000 chemical reactions occur every second. The brain is also a radio transmitter. Which means that we are able to send out measurable electric wave signals. Our brains continue to do this hours after death. We also have 100 billion neurons, and different experiences create different neural connections, bringing out different emotions. And... Depending on which neurons become stimulated, specific connections become stronger and more efficient while others may become weaker. This is called neuroplasticity. And this ability for our brain to form and recognize synaptic connections is proof that any skill or talent can be reachable through training. Rationality and emotional resilience work the same way. These are neural connections that can be strengthened. In fact, anytime you do anything, you are physically modifying your brain to become better at it. And since this is a foundational mechanism of the brain, being self-aware can greatly enrich one's life experience. Specific neurons and neurotransmitters, such as norepinephrine, trigger a defensive state when we feel that our thoughts have to be protected from the influence of others. If we are then confronted with a difference in opinion, then the chemicals that are released in the brain are the same ones that try and ensure our survival in dangerous situations. In this defensive state, the more primitive part of the brain interferes with rational thinking, and the limbic system can knock out most of our working memory, physically causing narrow-mindedness. We see this in the politics of fear, or when someone is being stubborn in a discussion. No matter how valuable an idea is, the brain has a hard time processing it while in such a state. On a neural level, it reacts as if being threatened. Even if that threat comes from a harmless opinion or fact that we would otherwise find helpful or useful and could rationally agree with, but when we express ourselves and our views are appreciated, these defense chemicals decrease in the brain and dopamine neurotransmission activates the neurons making us feel empowered and increasing our self-esteem. Our beliefs have a profound impact on our body chemistry. This is why placebos can be so effective. Self-esteem or self-belief closely linked to the neurotransmitter serotonin, when the lack of it takes on severe proportions, it often leads to depression, self-destructive behavior, or even suicide. Social validation increases these levels of dopamine and serotonin in the brain and allows us to let go of emotional fixations and become self-aware more easily. Mirror neurons and consciousness, social psychology often look at the basic human need to fit in and calls this the normative social influence. When we grow up, our moral and ethical compass is almost entirely forged by our environment, so our actions are often a result of the validation we get from society. But new developments in neuroscience are giving us better understanding of culture and identity. Recent neurological research has confirmed the existence of empathetic mirror neurons. When we experience an emotion or perform an action, specific neurons fire. But when we observe someone else performing this same action, or when we imagine it, many of the same neurons we fire again, as if we were performing the actions ourselves. These empathy neurons connect us to other people, allowing us to feel what others feel. And since these neurons respond to imagination, we can experience emotional feedback from them as if it came from someone else. This system is what allows us to self-reflect. The mirror neuron does not know the difference between it and others, and it is the reason why we are so dependent of social validation and why we want to fit in. We are in constant duality between how we see ourselves and how others see us. This can result in confusion in terms of identity and self-esteem. And brain scans show that we have experienced these negative emotions even before we are aware of them. But when we are self-aware, we can alter misplaced emotions because we can control the thoughts that caused them. This is a neurochemical consequence of how memories become liable when retrieved and how they are restored through protein synthesis.
Self-observing profoundly changes the way our brain works. It actually activates the self-regulating neurocortical regions, which give us an incredible amount of control over our feelings. Every time we do this, our rationality and emotional resilience are strengthened. When we are not self-aware, most of our thoughts and actions are impulsive, and the idea that we are randomly reacting and not making conscious choices is instinctively frustrating. The brain resolves this by creating explanations for our behavior and physically rewriting it into our memories through memory reconsolidation, making us believe that we were in control of our actions. This is also called backward rationalization. This can leave most of our negative emotions unresolved and ready to be triggered at any time. They become a constant fuel to our confusion, as our brain will keep trying to justify why we behaved irrationally. All this complex and almost schizophrenic subconscious behavior is the result of a vastly parallel distributed system in our brain. There is no specific center of consciousness. The appearance of a unity is in fact each of these separate circuits being enabled and being expressed in one particular moment in time. Our experiences are constantly changing our neural connections, physically altering the parallel system that is our consciousness. <laughs>